Welcome to Best Binocular Reviews. My name's Jason. Today I'm going to be looking at these Athlon Argus 8x42 binoculars. The 8x42 Athlon Argus is a roof prism binocular with an open bridge body shape. Uh, what this basically means is rather than having one single bridge connecting the two barrels together, there's, there's two, of, two thinner ones, one located at each end of, of the barrel itself. The, the advantage of this sort of design is that um, it in theory can make the binocular a little bit lighter in that there's um, less material connecting the two barrels um, in together, um, so you have less material here. But in reality these days um, you do get a lot of single um, uh, bridge design binoculars that have a, you know, quite a thin um, bridge itself anyway, so, so that doesn't really work out. But what the most important uh, advantage that I find is um, the fact that it leaves uh, um, more of the barrel exposed and, and there's this little area in between here that that's, um, should you be walking around and, and not carrying your binocular you know, around your neck. There's a, a really good place and a, a really um, secure place to have it li like this to hold your binoculars um, so that they don't fall out of your hands and drop away. So this, this sort of design has become quite popular of recent and it's something that I, I, you know, I quite like because um, I, I quite often use my binoculars without a, a neck strap and without attaching them around my neck. Um, the next thing to sort of look at about these binoculars is the fact that they have a, um, a rubber armour um, uh, uh, that covers most of the barrels um, the, and in fact the only sort of exposed areas are the actual bridges um, themselves. The, the armor itself is, is, is quite thick, you know, um, it's thicker than quite a lot of the, the ones I see these days. Um, and um, the rubber is, is fairly hard. Um, it's, it's not quite as spongy as, as some that I see, um, and, and at the same time it's not quite as, as hard as the others that I see. So it offers quite a nice uh, level of grip. Um, and this, this um, sort of uh, this level of grip is actually increased by these really good um, etchings or markings in the actual rubber um, or groovings I think is probably a better way to describe it um, they, they really do offer a, a, you know, a nice secure area to hold on to and, and you know, it just feels really quite nice and, and, and it has a really nice design to it sort of quite an aggressive look I'd say, I guess I'd say um, the, as you can see the, the rubber armoring itself um, is actually attached to the binocular really nice and tightly so it's a good place to look at it it's always you know, at the end of the objective lenses here um, you know, on some cheaper binoculars, sometimes the armor will, you know, sort of slide about and it isn't actually glued to the to the chassis very well. Um, there's no such problems with this on, uh, on these um, Argus binoculars. These Athlon binoculars have tethered objective lens covers. So, by, what I mean by that is, as you can see, um, you just open them like that with these nice little flaps on the end, and they simply hang down below the the barrels, um, out of the way. Something that I really do like on modern binoculars and the fact that um, it just makes a lot less chance that of you actually losing the, the covers or um, you know even if, even if you weren't to lose them um, as you're walking around in the fields uh, you take the ones that aren't tethered you, you take off and you put in your bag and then you know it just becomes a bit of a pain to keep on putting them back again and so you, you protect your lenses a lot less than you would if they're just always there ready to put back when you, you stop glassing. As we can see these binoculars have uh, 42 millimeter objective lenses and one thing that I do like and you know, I immediately notice over here is if you have a look at the, the lenses themselves are actually set back quite deeply within the ends of the barrels. So over here there's a, there's a slight overhang and this is something that um, I really do uh, look out for and it's something that I, I, I do like in the fact that because, because of this it, it offers quite a lot of protection to the actual lenses themselves. So in, and this works in a number of ways. So for instance if I was to take the binocular and put it face down on a, on a surface that perhaps you know was rough or had some you know some sharp objects like some rocks or gravel over there um, you could actually end up scratching the glasses if they were closer to the ends of the barrel so that it does offer some sort of protection but then even um, whilst you're using them whilst you're glassing for instance um, you know it, it prevents dust from falling on the glasses or, or perhaps when you're out um, in wet conditions in light rain um, it will prevent um, moisture from coming on the glasses which could actually um, lead to um, your view being spoiled slightly. So it, you know it's something that I do look out for because on some binoculars in an effort to to make a binocular shorter and more compact um, they they make this overhang a lot less and, and what that does mean is it just exposes your, your glass um, your lenses on the ends to you know more danger and, and the chances of getting dirty more quickly.
These binoculars have twist up and down eye cups. So as you can see, uh, what that means is they, they twist up and down like this, um, compared to some binoculars which have a um, rubber folding up and down ones, um, usually on, on cheaper um, or less expensive products, um, you find those. So this is really good. They have um, twist up and down eye cups. And as you can see, they have a huge amount of eye relief. I think it's, it's 17 millimeters. So, you know, that should be plenty if you were to wear glasses, um, you would more than likely, you know, have them um, fully retracted or, you know, somewhere in between. Um, and that would give your, uh, with your glasses in between your, your face and the actual lenses, um, you can get that distance exactly right. I mean, even um, people who don't wear glasses, some of us may, uh, you know, like to just adjust them um, with having different shaped faces, um, as it were, so your, your eyes, just to get your eyes at the exact right distance to the, to the lenses below, um, so you can see the full field of view without any interruptions, you know, or dark rings forming on the edges. So as you can see, the, um, the twist-up eye cups themselves, um, they have a, a really nice feel to them. They, they um, as you can see here, they have, um, also they have two intermediate click stops in between fully extended and fully retracted. This is quite nice because it offers you, um, as I said, a, a little more flexibility into getting um, the position, um, tailoring it exactly right for your, your shape of, of face um, or whether you to wear glasses or not glasses. Um, the mechanism itself is, is quite nice and sturdy. It, there is a, a fraction of movement over there. Um, you know, some of the, the really best binoculars, are, you know, it's, it's rock hard, but it, I, I wouldn't really worry about this at all. Um, and as you can see, there's, there's quite a nice wrist resistance to movement. So even if um, you were to um, prefer to not use one of the click stops, if you, if you wanted to, to get a position exactly right, you could actually position these eye cups at any sort of location between um, fully extended and fully retracted, and, and it will actually stay there. So that's really good. The next thing to talk about, I guess, is um, the, the focus wheel. Um, this is one thing that I really do like on these binoculars. Um, nice and large, as you can see, they, they um, protrude out the top um, quite a long way, so they, they're really easy to reach. Um, it turns really, really smoothly. I mean, uh, that's one thing that you can definitely notice with these. It's got a really, really nice smooth mechanism to it. No sticking or, or rough sections between um, right one end of the of the um, uh, um, spectrum to the to the other. It, it's, it's it's smooth as silk. Um, the the rubberized track that's on the on the exit on the outside of it, as you can see, um, it has a soft rubber track. It's it's actually quite soft, uh, quite a bit softer than the the actual. Um, body coating itself. This offers loads and loads of grip combined with this with this um, these these um, indents over here. Uh, there's plenty of grip. Now, for day-to-day -day use, you know, when you, you you're using your binoculars, the, the level of grip is not that important. Um, I mean, it's always better than having a really slippy surface, of course. But it's it's when winter comes along and you you're wearing thick gloves. Um, that's when um, having a really nice, large, centrally located focused wheel like this. One that turns nice and smoothly and the one that's got loads of grip just makes it that much easier to use your binoculars um, when you're wearing gloves so that that definitely is something to look out for especially if you're going to be going out in winter um, next thing we can quickly have a look at over here is the diopter adjustment ring as you can see um, it's located in the usual place um, on, on most modern binoculars these days is on the, the right hand barrel you do get some binoculars where it's located on the central focus. Um, it's integrated into the focus ring over here, but you know, for the most majority, they they located it right here on the on the barrel. Um, these ones, um, as standard, you, you simply turn the uh, the ring itself to adjust the setting um, when you want to calibrate the binoculars. Um, for those that don't know, the diopter is for uh, basically it's. It, adjust the focus on the right side of the, the binocular independently of the left whereas the, the obviously the central focus wheel it, it, it changes the focus uh, both sides um, in conjunction so what you can do with this the, the diopter is, is basically um, you can calibrate the binoculars to allow for any differences in, in the vision between your left and right eyes so uh, and and there is a link um, if, you, if you go through my website there, it goes into detail on, on exactly how you can do that so the ring itself, sorry, I, I digress a little. Um, it turns quite smoothly. Um, it has a, a good level of um, friction to it. Um, and as you can see on these binoculars, it actually has two little raised areas, one on, on the top and one, one on the bottom. Over there, okay, you can see it over there. So it, it makes um, adjusting it that much easier. But the one thing that I will say, 
once you've set your diopter um, you really shouldn't have to move it or change it um, ever again you know in theory and you know that unless you were to actually share your binoculars with a, a friend who has a different um, obviously different eyesight than you do so you know the best ones are lockable um, and so once you have your setting you lock it in place and, and then it's, it's secure and you never have to worry about it moving um, so these aren't lockable and the fact that I think you know that there is a good level of friction over here but the fact that they they're nice and easy to turn is a good thing but also on the downside there's more chance obviously of being moved by accident you know someone coming around and just you know flicking it like that and then your your setting being uh, changed you know if you if also um, what I would recommend is if you do actually have a setting that isn't you know easy to remember so right on the on the nought or the plus sign over there I would just take a little um, a pen or, a, or an etch with a knife and just um, etch your marking over there so it's, it's quite easy to every time you're using binoculars you can quickly see that if it has been moved and, and just replace it to the exact point without having to recalibrate your binoculars one thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about the uh, focus wheel a little earlier on was the actual gearing of, of the mechanism itself. As you can see, to take the focus of these binoculars from one extreme, so from near focus, if we went all the way to the other extreme, it takes a lot of turning of the focus wheel. In fact, it takes just over two full rotations um, of the wheel itself. Now this sort of gearing is, is quite, what I would describe as quite lowly geared in the fact that, as I said, it takes quite a lot of um, turning to the, to the wheel. Um, this has a good thing, a good side to it and a bad side. The good point to it is, and the advantage of it, is because it's, it takes it's a, a lowly gear, geared mechanism and it takes a lot more um, turning to, to move the, the focus, you, it makes it just that much more easier to make small adjustments to your, to your focus. So, so in, in theory it's, it's a lot, far easier to make small adjustments um, and get your focus completely spot on. Um, those that are, you know, and, and on, on, the, on the negative side of, of this is obviously that if you do need to make really um, uh, long uh, focus changes, so for instance if, if one moment you're, you're looking at you know, something like a butterfly or something nearby and then the next minute you want to quickly go and look at something in the distance like an eagle you know, flying up above you, um, you, know, you have to make a, a large adjustment to the focus wheel. Um, which obviously takes a bit longer than 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 if um, than those ones that take um, less turning of the wheel. So. I like the eyepiece covers on these um, Athlon binoculars in the fact that um, they fit really nicely onto the eye cups themselves. Um, so not too hard to get on and not too hard to take off. But at the same time, they you know they have um, they fit well enough so they shouldn't come off too easily. Um, as well as that, they're made out of a nice soft um, rubber sort of material with a, a flexible bridge in between. You know, quite often you get um, sort of hard plastic ones and to replace them and store them you have to actually um, reset the binocular and, um, either, you know, open up, open up the hinges over here and reset the binocular um, in order to replace the, the, the cover itself. This is a small thing, but you know, once you have your setting over there, it's quite nice to be able to just um, keep your binocular at that setting. So um, you take off the, the covers and you're ready to go. So as I say, they, they fit really nicely. Um, uh, you know, some, a really simple thing, but it, they work well. Likewise, I'll just go back to the objective lens covers. They have a really good fit as well. So nicely onto the ends of the barrels, um, won't come away too easily by accident. I just want to also uh, take a quick talk about the next trap that comes with these Athlon um, Argos 8x42 binoculars. Um, as you can see over here, it's, um, it's, it's pretty well padded. I mean, it's got quite a lot of padding over there, as you can see, it's quite nice and thick. Um, it is very lightweight, uh, which in a way is a good thing, in a way a bad thing. It's nice and lightweight, but in some ways it just feels quite, you know, a bit too lightweight. In some ways I would have preferred a, you know, something with a bit more substance to it. The underneath of the strap itself is, is, is smooth. Um, for me, on some of the better neck straps that I see, it has a, a sort of rubberized um, neoprene, neoprene uh, material underneath that just adds a bit of grip to the under, under, under surface, and so that it's less chance of it sliding you know, on your neck and shoulders. As you can see, the, the strap itself has a, a very slight curve to it, if at all. Um, some of the, again, sometimes I find um, some of the the straps that I like, I prefer more, have a, have a nice curved design to it, and it just fits just that little bit better around your neck and shoulders. The connector over here um, is, is sort of a, a fake leather. Um, as you can see, it's I can see in the, the light over there. Um, it seems to be well stitched, and I don't think it'll come away too easily. 
the strap itself um, attaches to the binocular in the usual way with this um, thin nylon part what you do is you you basically um, thread it through the the eyelets on the side of the binocular back on themselves and then and through the slider over here so that you can adjust for length on the whole um, the, the strap itself is, is good um, it's, it's going to be comfortable um, and, and more than you know enough comfort for a, a pair of binoculars sort of this weight um, but what I will say is, um, and, 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 and equally as good as, as most within this price range. But you know, this is where sometimes you see a, a slight difference between um, you know, mid-level mid, mid binoculars and the, the very high-end optics. That, you know, they just go um, that little bit further you know, in, in the terms of attention to detail. You know, things like the extra grip and, and it being a bit more curved and things like that. These Athen Argus binoculars come with a, a soft carry case, as you can see over here. Um, the, it has a, a flip over lid design um, which is held fast by a strip of velcro over here and so that's um, it makes it uh, um, the, the velcro ma makes it um, really nice and quick to, to actually um, gain access um, to your binoculars inside so that you know that's the advantage of that but um, as you can probably hear on the video um, unless you're really careful um, opening and closing a, a velcro strapped um, carry case it does make quite a bit of noise which for some people you know hunters um, for example and and some birders where um, you need to remain as stealthy as possible um, any sort of noise um, can be a problem and, and could actually give your position away or you know even worse frighten away whatever it is you're trying to look at the bag itself as you can see has its own strap um, over here which connects via these uh, these um, rotating clips over here. Um, these, these quick release clips can be removed which is a good thing. Sometimes I see um, bags come with a strap which is, a, which is a good thing but you know sometimes you don't always want the bulk there especially if you're going to um, thread it through your belts you know using this uh, belt loop over here. Um, if you're going to be carrying your binoculars th this way you can quite easily um, remove the, the strap itself and leave it at home. The interior of the bag is fairly simple um, which is uh, it doesn't contain any extra pockets or you know places to keep um, your cleaning cloth or anything like that. Um, the binoculars themselves fit nicely within the bag, which is something you know that's well worth um, keeping an eye on. You know there are lots of um, binoculars out there that don't actually um, tie up very well with the, the bag themselves, and they can be sometimes too easy, um, uh, too loose inside, so they flop around. Um, and there's more chance of having damage or sometimes it's just a bit too tight so they actually can be quite hard to to get into the bag but you know more importantly that um, as you can see here if, if I have the binoculars um, with the uh, eye cups fully extended and let's just put on the uh, covers over here I can still just close the bag over there you know sometimes you'll find um, manufacturers forget this detail and you actually have to every time you want to replace your binoculars have to you know reset it down like this and um, do it like this and, and and close your bag up which you know is not a massive deal but if you're doing it you know over and over again quite a few times during the day it can become a bit of a pain that concludes my quick overview of the mostly the external features on these Athlon uh, binoculars as I said in the, at the start of the video, for the full review where I go into loads and loads of detail on, on everything to do with these binoculars, the optics, the coatings, I compare them with other binoculars within this price range, um, and loads and loads more detail, detail. Please be sure to check out the link below that will take you directly to the, to the actual review itself on the BBL website. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you again.